Sometimes sequels are inevitable. When you've got characters as lovable as Indiana Jones or James Bond or Bridget Jones, you just know that one film will never be enough. People want to see these lovable rogues on multiple adventures and movie companies won't turn their noses up at charging you dry to watch it. Therefore, it's really strange to find movies which hinted, suggested and downright alluded to sequels only to never come to fruition. And I'm not talking about the films which simply flopped and thus had no money to do so, I'm talking about some real gems which were left annoyingly open-ended. That being said, fair warning, I am talking about one super duff film later on in this, but we'll get to that. With this in mind, I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com and this is 10 Forgotten Movie Sequels That Totally Should Have Happened. Number 10. Master and Commander Based on just one book of a series of, like, a million, Master and Commander made its fair share at the box office, but just not quite enough to bring about the franchise that producers hoped this first entry would inspire. And it's a damn shame given that the movie is, for the most part, pretty excellent. You really don't hear about this one nowadays though, it just kind of sunk below the surface without really leaving a mark. But the fact that this movie was just one of many stories about the same characters means that not only is a sequel warranted, it's kind of essential. Number 9. Serenity Okay, so we all know the story here. Joss Whedon, creator of shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and director of The Avengers, made an awesome TV show called Firefly, which was cancelled way before its time, but then was given another chance to finish it off as a movie which ended up being called Serenity. And it was a pretty awesome movie, to be fair. But here's the problem. It was so good that all you could think of was, oh, man, this is pretty good. I like this. I want more of this. Also, where is Firefly? Because of the pre-existing TV show, the threads and ideas for future adventures were spilling out into the cold void of space, but no one has yet to pick up the reins. And with the sad passing of Ron Glass, it seems even less likely to happen now. Number 8. Who Framed Roger Rabbit? This movie is just pure fun, and I'm putting it on this list solely because there's so much potential for future cartoon capers. The best part is, upon watching it again, you notice how well such a mammoth task was handled. The mixture of live action and animation is far harder than you might think to pull off, and it's acted so well by its fleshy leads that the lines blur often and well. It would have been nice, perhaps, to see what Roger had been up to after all these years. Maybe the plot could have been centred around the decline of traditional animation, and how most of the characters are out of work these days. Or maybe something happier, but I've got no experience with that emotion. Number 7. Kill Bill Volume 2 of all the movies on this list, I'm probably the most dubious about this one because, I mean, it's not really necessary given the way that Kill Bill Vol. 2 ended. And you know what? I know that. It's not like I definitely wanted to happen either. It's more to do with the fact that I know Quentin Tarantino has the idea all worked out for what's going to happen. And the fact is that Tarantino seems to go back and forth on whether Volume 3 might happen, fueling fires and then putting them out just as quickly. All we know is that our favourite shovel chin director sure does love a good surprise, so who knows? Number 6. The Last Boy Scout the Last Boy Scout isn't an amazing movie, but it is a good and underrated one. It also has Bruce Willis in it, by the way, where he gives one of the most badass performances of his career as beaten, reckless private investigator Joe Hallenbach, who teams up with Damon Wayans uh, to solve a football-based murder mystery. Unfortunately, due to a budget mostly eaten up by a script fee, seriously, this set records for how much the author got paid, all the future planned installments were canned. But given the nature of the character's profession, we could have easily had Joe solving a different crime in every movie. Number 5. Super bad. F*** me, right? I just loved these characters and their shared dynamics so much that a sequel definitely could have worked. Well, at one point at least. The first movie even clearly hinted that college and change were on the horizon, which is almost like dangling future escapades in front of us. Sticking to the story taking place over one night formula, a sequel could have reunited our heroes at Evans College campus for another insane trip, while also exploring the difficulties of maintaining friendships from a distance and how Seth might have handled meeting his best friend's new roommates. And I guess McLovin would be there or something. Number 4. The Goonies For anyone who grew up in the 80s, this was THE adventure movie, akin to something you might dream up whilst out playing with your friends just hoping and praying that one day it might happen in real life. Alas, it never did and I'm still unfulfilled today. The serial nature of this film with its clearly defined characters and group focus meant that adventures could have easily been incorporated into their lives. It didn't even need to be the same actors as it could have been a role past a younger brothers and sisters. However, we never got to see what could have been and it's a real shame. Number 3. Super Mario Brothers well, here we go, the absolutely duff film that I was hinting to at the beginning. This film, I f***ing hate it, I really do. It ruined a great part of my childhood by taking a beloved fat plumber who fights a giant spiky turtle in order to save a princess who leads a race of toad people and made it ridiculous. Well, more ridiculous. Bad acting, bad special effects and a plot which was so stupid that it made your head feel like one of the Goombas, this was just trash. 
which is why it needed a sequel. Something to pull it up by the dungarees and shove a power star right up in there. The sequel was also blatantly hinted at in the film and while I'd be disgusted to see any of this mess repeated, it would be so good to see Mario Mario on the big screen again. Oh, Mario Mario. Number 2. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang when the creator of Lethal Weapon and director of Iron Man 3 puts on a film with Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer, you know it's going to be an interesting experience. I really enjoyed this film and the main reason this movie remains so awesome is because of the relationship between Downey's Harry and Val Kilmer's gay Perry. The banter levels are working overload and these two make for one of the best double acts in cinema history. You put, put a live round in that gun. Oh well, yeah, there was like an 8% chance. Eight percent. Was it just 8? 8? Yeah. Who taught you math? More. What's more, this feels just like one of the many mysteries that the pair would likely solve given that the ending has them forming their own detective agency. I know this is really unlikely and it probably will never happen, but I can dream, can't I? Can I? Yes, yes, yes I can. And number one, Big Trouble in Little China. John Carpenter's Big Trouble in Little China is simply put a laugh riot. Self-aware and horrifically cheesy at the same time, it's a wonder that this thing even works. Thankfully though it does, mostly due to Kurt Russell, who as protagonist Jack Burton perfectly weighs the movie's sense of irony in his performance. Jam-packed with hammy dialogue and awful special effects, Big Trouble is ridiculously entertaining, imbued with dozens of awesome set pieces and some of the downright weirdest characters you'll ever come across. This movie ends though with Jack Burton having saved the day. Driving his truck out of Chinatown, we pan across to see that a horrible monster is clinging to the back of his vehicle. And though this was certainly just included as a joke to end the movie on, Big Trouble 2 would have definitely worked. And for the record, young Kurt Russell, yes please. And that's our list. Got any more sequels that should have happened? Well, let us know about them in the comments section below. And if you want to come back to me again and again, then you can do so on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. If you enjoyed the video, then like, share, and subscribe for more. As always, I've been Jules for WhatCulture.com, and I'll speak to you soon.